Tensions with Iran are heightened after the president reportedly ordered airstrikes and then changed his mind. Roy Moore, he's running for office again, and Comfort Foods divulged the 2020 Dem presidential candidates share their favorites. Team Rising is here to weigh in on it all. Brent Cohen is the executive director of Generation Progress and the vice president of youth engagement at CAP. And Mika Mossbacher is a Trump 2020 advisory board member. Welcome to you both. Thanks for having us. Great so to see you both. The president called off these strikes against these Iran, reportedly called off the strikes against Iran. It was going to be in retaliation for striking an American drone. Mika, do you think that he made the right decision in calling these off? Absolutely. He doesn't mm -hmm. want to ratchet up tensions. And uh, he said during the campaign repeatedly that he did not want America to engage in a protracted war. Iraq was a disaster. We've been there for years. And so I think he's playing a very strategic chess game. Mm -hmm. I know that there is a lot of concern. Yesterday, um, Sec uh, Senator Schumer said that the president might bumble into the war. There, there is no way that he doesn't have a strategy, but I think he really liked the Iranians to come to the table. And let's face it, the U.S. Treasury Department with their maximum pressure campaign and the fact that they've imposed the toughest sanctions in history on Iran is definitely breaking the back and, and also affecting the uh, economic stream fueling the Iranian Revolutionary Guard mm -hmm. by targeting shipbuilding, petrochemical mm. industry, etc. So I think it's working and I think Iran has been a bad actor for decades. Sure. So this is is not unexpected. Brent, is it working? You know, I think if uh, President Trump didn't want a war in Iran, he shouldn't have created a crisis. And I think what he's done since he's taken office is just ratcheted up pressures, constructed a crisis, pulling us out of the uh, nuclear deal unnecessarily, and then throwing a fit when Iran said, well, we're going to step back as well. Uh, it's un an, an unnecessary uh, escalation of tensions here. Uh, and it's a little concerning to me, it should be to all Americans, when you think about ordering a strike and then pulling back on it and really wanting to question uh, whether there is, in fact, a strategy. But I reject yeah. this notion that tensions were not there during the deal. They were harassing our ships across Absolutely. the Persian Gulf. They kidnapped our sailors and put them on their knees in front of cameras on uh, that island. I can't remember what it is in the Persian Gulf. There were there's still nefarious bad actors. Tensions were still high. I mean, literally, we would have had the right to shoot back at them while they were kidnapping our soldiers. So it's not like just because we withdrew from the deal that we're in this place. Maybe the regime itself is just aggressive and bad. No, no question. Yeah. So, right. But our actions haven't helped. Mika? Right. I well, mean, because I, because we didn't just withdraw from the deal. I mean, to your point, yeah. right? We levied, we reimposed the sanctions, but then we went further than that. I mean, right. our goal, it, I've been calling it economic war because the goal is either to bring them back to the negotiating table, but no groundwork has been laid for that kind of diplomacy or to actually destabilize the regime, which I'm not sure is a great idea either because you never know what comes next. Well, I think it's important to emphasize that there can be a proportional strike Mm -hmm. which was probably what was planned, which is different from boots on the ground and actually engaging in all that war. Well, it, it could be because we have to stand top, and President Trump has said repeatedly that we're not going to appease our enemies. But also, let's look at our allies. Uh, there are individuals that are dependent on that region for oil production, including Indonesia, Japan, mm -hmm. China, and they need to, to come to the table and yeah. help negotiate with the United United States, it's in their best interest too. Right. But I guess that's, that's what makes me nervous yeah. is, is Mika's right. I mean, if we are in this place where if we do nothing, you know, what is the right next answer? I'm very much opposed to, to even limited military strikes because you never know how that can escalate out of control. But the president has essentially boxed himself in here. That's right. He, he has boxed himself and the entire country into a, a really uh, unnecessary and, and troubling place, quite frankly. And so we do need to find out what it is that we do. Younger Americans are very clear on this. We don't want to walk into another war. And I don't think Our, that's partisan. Well, nobody wants It's not war. partisan. Right. It's generational. Well, it's generational. Yeah. Uh, from Generation Z, Millennials, Generation X, more than half our lives, in some cases our entire lives, have been spent at some type of conflict. And we don't want to go there again. Uh, and these actions that's haven't true. helped.
threats from, from President Trump. Well, we also have to look at it from Israel's perspective as well, mm -hmm. um, because uh, that is where uh, Iran is funding, you know, Hamas, Hezbollah, and other right. jihadist terrorist organizations. So, so their stability in that region is very important, too. I think too. that's, I think that's an important this point. Puzzle. Because, and, and also, we know uh, Trump's relationship with Netanyahu. We know Netanyahu very hardline and very aggressive stance against Iran. So you have Bolton, Pompeo, and Netanyahu in Trump's ear on this. And Netanyahu, not without his own controversies, uh, failed policies, and interventions in places where it shouldn't be happening. Indeed. So, uh, you know, I think we've got we've got quite a complex puzzle here that, that hasn't been working with the type of strategy we'd like to see. I am just hoping we can avoid war with Iran for long right. enough to get yes. a different president in there. Oh, we're getting, uh, Trump has apparently tweeted on this. Uh, we've got it. We have it here. I'll, I'm it pulling says, it up. Uh, we got it in the prompter. On okay. Monday, they shot down an unmanned drone flying in international waters. We were cocked and loaded to retaliate last night on three different sites. When I asked, how many will die? 150 people, sir, was the answer from a general 10 minutes before the strike. I stopped it. So that is uh, Trump's explanation this morning for why he stopped it. He was concerned about loss Oh, he of was lives. absolutely right to do it. Very though. measured 150 response. 150 people in response for an unmanned drone yeah. is it not a proportional strike Pers whatsoever. Yeah. You should never yeah. be in this situation to begin with. I think that's the bottom line. And I think the question is that everyone should be asking is whether Trump is bringing us closer to war uh, to save his own presidency. What's your no, reaction, Mika? because I no. would say that war would be the one way. Yes, I couldn't agree he, more. He would exit the international stage, <laughs> right. that in a collapsed economy. Well, if he I goes to say, war, he will lose re-election. Well, but I, I, but, no but I will it. say, yeah. I, I agree with your political yeah. analysis. However, I will say Trump tweeted in the past when Obama was in the White House right. th that he thought Obama wanted to go to war with Iran to be able to get reelected. So his thinking That's in the true. past, at least, has been that it would be politically advantageous to have war with Iran. But during his campaign, he again reiterated that he did not want to engage in any protracted war in that region. And so, therefore, he's kept his other campaign promises. So I expect Addy. him to adhere to this one. And I, so, adding, I, I want to say, adding broken. to this tweet, he said, yeah. not a purport, he said, the reason that he's giving here is it is not proportionate to shooting down an unmanned drone. I am in no hurry. Our military is rebuilt and ready to go. Sanctions are biting and more added last night. Iran can never have nuclear weapons, not against the USA and not against the world. Right. So actually quite reasonable behavior from the president I, there. We had a plan yeah. to make sure they didn't get nuclear weapons. He pulled well, us out of that plan. For nuclear weapons for 10 to 15 years, not necessarily. Better than uh, where we nuclear. are now. That's right. Well, that was a flawed plan. Right. Well, we'll debate okay, that another day. Plan, but, but speaking yes. of nefarious sure, actors, sure, we'll be talking about this more. Yeah, Good speaking, segue there. Yeah, like that. <laughs> speaking of nefarious actors who probably shouldn't be on the world stage, um, Roy Moore, the uh, what is he a judge? Judge Roy Moore yeah, yeah. has announced yeah, his re-election or election prospects for 2020 in Alabama. The president of the United States has already come out and urged Roy Moore not to want not to run. Mika, do you think he has? Well, do you think he'll have any support from the GOP or the National Party? Yeah, it, his yeah. winning is as tough as putting socks on a rooster. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well from said. a lady who sounds well, like she might have tried that. Well said. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. uh, but, but, granted, this was before the president weighed in and said, yeah. don't do it, Roy, and Roy went ahead and did it anyway. Before all of that, there was a poll that came out that showed him leading in the Republican primary. Yeah, I mean, it was just shocking, right? Not just because he had such an embarrassing loss in the general uh, this last time around, but also because of his stances on a whole host of issues. He's been removed from the bench twice right, for exactly. defying orders. He was removed for refusing to take down the Ten Commandments from his courtroom. He was removed for uh, refusing to uh, comply with Supreme Court decision around same-sex Yeah, same I think they like marriage. all that part. I think it's I the, say, you know, to be honest, a lot weird of relationship like with, that. With, with the children, girls that was That's the right, problem. Right. I, yeah. But that was one of a series of problems uh, that should be striking for everybody. Well, that's a red state, too, and I believe mm -hmm. Trump carried it by 27 yeah, points. Yeah. And so the fact that Doug Jones won right. and he came out against Kavanaugh, I mean, this should be an 
easy win. But without money, Roy Moore is dead in the water. You know, money's the mother's milk of politics. Absolutely. And I don't see it coming in from the Republican Party. Huh. But it didn't last time either. He was outspent 10 to 1 in the primary, and he still emerged from it last time. So we'll see what sort of magic he's able to pull out in this primary. But I don't. Interesting. This you know, time it'll, around, it'll be interesting. with the president and the entire national party against him, he will have a very difficult time winning yeah. that primary. I wouldn't As be surprised to even see President Trump there actively primary or actively working to defeat Roy Moore and having the entire National Party back somebody else, which would be unprecedented, but would be worth it in this particular case. Yeah, literally because literally anyone Mitch else. Because as Mitch McConnell said, literally uh, only these could geniuses could pick somebody who would get, who would lose a, a Republican Senate seat in Alabama. Well, that's yeah. a little offensive to Alabama right. voters, isn't it? Sure is. <laughs> um, we have another really important story yes. that we had to talk it's about. So much happening. New York Times interviewed like 20 or 19, 21 yes. of the Democrats running in the 2020 presidential election. They asked them a range of questions, varying in levels of substance. Yes. But one of the things they asked them was what their favorite comfort food is. And this was actually very revealing. Mm -hmm. um, you got responses like Delaney, who said his comfort food is grilled chicken sandwich from McDonald's. No sauce. Gross. Um, in terms of baked potato, <laughs> yeah. which is, I, I can Okay, you know, I support bad. that. I like a good baked potato, like loaded up yeah. with butter and sour cream Ma and Marianne bacon Williams and everything. Marianne Williams she has no comfort food. I have no comfort food. Because she's truly at peace. I like that. Yeah, and then, I envy her. <laughs> Kirsten Gillibrand said a glass of whiskey at the end of the night, but we don't, we're not sure if whether we believe that. Or right. Yeah, she I'm needs to that, name really. her brand. Yes. <laughs> and, is it, and is it top shelf? That's right. <laughs> um, maybe, the, to me, the strangest one was Cory Booker. I get yeah. that he's vegan, but he said his comfort food was veggies, which is just like... Maybe the lamest thing I could. And possibly Tulsi Gabbard know. gave a better vegan answer. She says she vegan cupcakes. Vegan cupcakes. Okay. Right. That's I fine. Can, I can yeah. That. Well, I'm right. from Texas and real men eat beef, yeah. and I love the fact that President Trump loves McDonald's <laughs> and served a <laughs> Big Mac buffet to on the Clemson University football team. I don't team think they the love White that. House. But, yeah, but by the way, <laughs> no yeah. one mentioned chocolate. A couple That's of right. senators mentioned M and M's. So my favorite That's comfort right. food is chocolate. Yes. Yes. I brought. Yes. Make a brat proud. <laughs> So much. I brought chocolate, you. and you know, to quote Forrest Gump, life yeah. is a box of chocolates. Right. This is what I with, grew up on, Russell uh, Stover. And with yeah. Democrats, you yeah. never know what you're going to get. <laughs> Mika is well, Mika just earned herself a daily Mike. spot on the panel, so uh, we'll see you every day. I what about you, Brad? I, I mean, I would combine two. Kamala Harris said homemade French fries and go with Gillibrand's glass of whiskey. You put them together, and you've got a nice That's late good. night Not snack. Bad. That's good. What Not do you bad. What about you? Taco Bell. Taco I mean, Taco Bell. Bell all day. God, yeah. We get along so well, it's weird yeah. sometimes. It's really weird sometimes. Yeah, nachos. Yeah, totally. Taco oh. Bell, nachos Bell grande. Mm -hmm. I'm from Texas, Texas too. I love Mexican fast food. That's I could take it all day. Well, we really? yeah. found the bipartisan agreement. No, I mean, it's not. It's not. That's the only one I can have up accessible. here. Down yeah. there, there's like Taco Cabana oh. and all can these other. Can you really call Taco yeah. Bell Mexican fast food? Though? Mexican ish. It's like beef. They call it beefy. Yeah, that's <laughs> <right>. beefy. <laughs> Yeah. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you. Always thank great you. to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Have, Friday. have a great weekend. Yeah. Coming up, no longer growing in the Grickle grass, a storied tree has seen its last season. And this week, members of the Senate received a classified briefing after reports of an unidentified aircraft from the Navy's UFOs. Those stories, when rising, continue. <laughs> you made it.